the way they hate And I know better than to listen to the people who are calling us names Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Brian, and today is Thursday, October 12th, 2023, and this is episode 544 of the Lots Project podcast, where we're defying norms and designing freedom. Today's episode is titled Coffee and Health, Pros, Cons, Myths, Truths, and Whatever We Can Find, and it's brought to you by Food Forest Farms, like all our coffee episodes. Today, I'll be talking about coffee and health. Is it good for you? Is it bad for you? Do you even care? I'll see what I have found out and share it with you. But first, let's grab a cup of coffee, catch up on what's going on and have a little chat. We will dive into that topic in just a little bit. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, MSU Rifle. How are we doing, man? Hope everything is going well. Uh, man, coffee this morning. I, uh, I've been drinking that Peruvian light that's been fantastic uh, day after day for the last uh, ooh, six or seven days. And this morning I was uh, 75%. I had enough for 75% of my French press. So I topped it off with a brand new bag of uh, light Ethiopian. So quarter Peruvian, quarter Ethiopian, or three quarters Peruvian, a quarter Ethiopian. And it is, uh, it's good. It's good, man. Brian, mark that down on your list to uh, try for a little blend. Maybe more 60, 40, 70, 30, uh, but heavy on the Peruvian, light on the Ethiopian. Fantastic. Good morning, Pip. How we doing? Nice to uh, shake your hand last night, man. That was a cool surprise you showed up. Uh, Pip, Pip swung in. Uh, we got together last night at uh, that Blinkwin Scully uh, pre-work day. Uh, we had some arrivals, people coming out to camp and uh, get settled in pip was able to make it up in time to swing out hang out for a little bit appreciate that man um work days today guys work day out at delinquent scully toolman tim uh his property down here in tennessee the one i've been working on trying to get camps installed tim and uh, becky have been down tim and i worked on a bunch of stuff got that outhouse built and um then uh, got that outhouse built and got some trails cut in and some campsites listed and things like that and uh, yeah it's day it's the day it's uh it's it's work day i it, it showed up really fast srf showed up really fast it feels like feels like i was just um just thinking about talking to tim about work day like hey we should start thinking about planning this and i think that was eight weeks ago so time time flies time flies for sure um uh yeah pip says uh, made it for a beer today's for swinging metal yeah we got uh, we got some decent projects going on today uh we are hopefully uh putting up a cabin <laughs> hopefully we have a cabin up today uh we're, we're expecting a decent sized crew Tim has all the material out there to uh, to put up an eight by eight cabin, get the sheathing on and uh, the roof. And yeah, we'll see. We will see. Uh, MSU Rifle says I'll head that way in a bit. Truck packed and ready to go. Two hour drive. I think the the rendezvous is. Uh, it seems like it's going to be around nine. That seems like the the time that things get going out there. Usually it's Tim and I meeting and I have my show and uh, and then dog duty and all stuff like that to get rolling. So usually end up out there about 9, 930. It sounds like Tim is kind of targeting that uh, that late, late, early morning, that, that eight, nine ish uh, to roll out there. There's some people out camping. Uh, I know some people rolled in last night um, and uh, can and hold on one second guys all right sorry had to take care of something <laughs> um anyway yeah headed out there and hung out it's uh it's going to be a lot of um uh msu any last minute tools you need man i think we're going to have all the tools we could possibly ever 
want to consider using and never touch, uh, kind of like my garage. Uh, <laughs> you know, you have them, you might need them, and you buy them, and you never touch them. I, I think we got we got a day's worth of work to do, and I think it's going to be just fine. We're going to have plenty of hands and plenty of tools, so don't worry. No worries on that. But uh, let's see what I got on my coffee list today. It's 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 partially, uh, definitely partially uh, work day related because Corey, like I said, Corey and I went out last night and uh, and hung out for a while and and met some folks that were showing up. And uh, it it was first day of Corey's vacation. Happy vacation, Corey. Happy vacation for sure. She is super. Um, <laughs> super excited to be on vacation she's had a hell of a shit storm for a couple weeks here at work and uh, man she definitely earned her days off so i'm excited to spend that with her uh but anyway yesterday was a normal wednesday kind of kind of a normal wednesday it was laundry day it was um it was head to the big city day to take care of kind of all of my all of my projects i do on wednesday so I went down and I had to get propane filled at Tractor Supply. So I haven't gone the route I did in Texas and found uh, the gas company locally. I um, I just find it easy to easy to go to Tractor Supply. Usually have to pick up something there. I figured I had to pick up something there this week uh, with the workday, but I, I really didn't end up needing to. Tim and Becky have been all over grabbing stuff for uh, for the property, but I uh, I went to Tractor Supply. I had two thirty pound propane tanks getting getting filled, and I don't know if you've ever gotten it filled there. I've talked about it on the show before, but um, when you show up, the propane tanks outside. Obviously, the bulk filler is um, is outside, and he sometimes the app works sometimes it doesn't the way it's supposed to work is you, you have the tsc app on your on your phone and you pick the location you're at and you say i need propane it's a little button doesn't really do anything doesn't tell you if it's called in or anything uh every once in a while it says uh, it says hey uh it'll say yeah message received and then nobody shows up i don't know if it pings them how it sends them if it calls the store or what but Half the time it works, half the time it doesn't. So I usually just park over there and walk in and say, hey, can I get some propane? Simple. You know, it's extra 20 feet of walking or whatever. So yesterday I do that. The girl's like, yeah, no problem. I wait, I wait, I wait, I wait, and I wait some more. And finally a guy comes rolling over on forklift. He says, do you need propane? <laughs> like he he hadn't been called. <laughs> like they forgot to call. I don't know. He didn't hear it. Um, <laughs> and I said, uh, I was like, yeah, I need propane. So he's filling it. Super nice guy. Super, um, super nice, cordial guy fills the things. And I don't know if you've ever gotten, uh, propane there. Usually they have this, um, usually they have a, uh, portable card reader that they'll be able to ring you up if you're using a card. As long as you don't need a receipt, you can use their thing. I, I have a rewards program with them so I can find all my receipts and all that. So I, I'm like, yeah, I'll use that thing. Well, half the time the employees don't bring it. Half the time they're like, oh, I don't know how to use it. And this and that. And I'm like, all right. So I'm just used to walking inside and paying. They just they're like, tell them this is how much you got outside. Like, trust tr honor system which is amazing in in this day and age but i uh the guy's like yeah do you want to pay out here i was like well if you got the thing and it works that's fine otherwise i just it's quicker for me to walk inside than to dick around with it out here he's like oh no no it's working he's like i use it all the time he's like uh we're, we get scored on it so we're, we're really pushing us using these things okay sure here's my card he he's dicking around with it he's punching in all the shit. He asked my phone number and puts it all in. And then he goes to run my card and he's looking at it and he's hitting, hitting the side and all this. And he's like, Oh, it looks like the, the card reader battery's dead. And, uh, and not the thing is like the, the tablet's working, but the card reader's dead. So man, you're going to have to go inside and pay. <laughs> and I'm just like, literally could have walked inside paid and been in my truck and on my way before this all happened 
but he insisted that I pay out there. And so I, I'm like, yeah, whatever, dude. I walk inside. I walk up to the register and the girl's standing there. She's not busy at all. I'm like, hey, I got propane. How much did you get? I got 14 gallons. Okay. She picks up the damn little kiosk thing at the register. She's got one sitting there. And instead of typing it in the register, she's like, I have to ring it up on this thing. My manager is really pushing us to get good scores. So anytime we do propane, either inside or outside, we have to use the thing. And I'm like, oh, God. So uh, so she rings it up. She has the same struggles as the other dude, like getting all the shit in a little, uh, little tablet. It's not even a tablet. It's the size of a cell phone. And on and on and on. And uh, finally, she goes to run the card. And she's looking at it. She turns it over. And she's like, huh, I didn't know you had to turn the card reader on separate. Like, what? Okay, cool. Like, you're supposed to be using this stuff. They don't tell you how to use it. And uh, the other guy's walking by. And she goes, hey, did you know that you need to turn the card reader on separate on these things? And the guy's like, what? And he picks it up and he turns it over. He looks at it and he hits the button. He goes, dude, it wasn't the battery. It just wasn't turned on. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my interaction with employees yesterday. I got to go. Uh, I got to go to the laundromat. Laundromat was cool. Uh, yesterday was full of uh, single, like middle-aged working type men. Um that Kyle would have been very excited to be hanging out at the laundry mat yesterday, but uh, all seemed like like guys on a road crew or something, <laughs> all hanging out. I I wouldn't have been surprised if uh, they were cracking beers. Like I was like, okay, I just sat outside and I worked on my my SRF per presentation while I did my laundry. I got out of there. I was able to skip Walmart yesterday, which was cool. No groceries needed this week. We've been uh, accumulating, and we're also going to be out of uh, out of the house for quite a bit over the next week. So, didn't have to go to Walmart. That's always a good day. It's always a good day when you don't have to go to Walmart. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got. Hey, um, was the lottery drawing last night? I don't pay attention to this shit, guys. You got to tell me when there's billions of dollars up for grabs. Like, I had no idea. I had no idea. I uh, didn't buy a ticket if it was last night. I don't know. I don't remember when the, the billions drawings are. Is that uh, is it the Powerball or the Mega Millions that's the billion? Uh, the the revenue maker for government. Because don't they make like uh, half, a, half a billion dollars in taxes or something every time that thing gets that high? You should probably buy a ticket. If it has uh, hasn't happened yet, my luck my luck usually is um, my luck is usually I buy the ticket. I'm like, oh, it's lottery day, and it'll be the next morning, and I'll buy it, and it'll be like, oh, amazing jock jackpot of fifteen million. Like I thought it was like a hundred or, or like two billion dollars or something, and uh, no. No, nah, either somebody hit it or I bought the wrong one. Like the the Mega Millions will be a billion dollars, and the the Powerball uh, had just been won. Like I I buy the wrong one, <laughs> wrong day. I don't know. Since we've been on the road, when I was in Minnesota working in gas stations, I could tell you the lottery numbers for every single lottery down the board. Like I was walking in looking at the signs every day. Shit, half the time they asked me to fix the machine and we didn't even work on them. But uh, yeah, I think there's a billion last night or today all those guys out at uh, Lincoln's gully they all had tickets so i hope they win and they don't forget the little guys <laughs> when, it, when it happens i think what 1.7 billion dollars i don't even i don't even want that much money like i just i just can't even decide to handle that much money so best of luck to whoever the winner is going to be and uh, let's see what else um Pip says, seems like there's more versions of Lotto than sodas. Oh, dude, yeah, it's uh, between the scratch-off tickets. Uh, Minnesota started doing these uh, instant play printout tickets. So, like, when you would get your Powerball ticket, the machine it spits out, it would spit out, like, a, a bingo card. And it would have, like, or a word search and shit like that. And it would have, like, all the puzzles and all the words. And you just like crossed them out instead of scratching them off. And they were already win. Like you could, it was already determined if you won or not, obviously. And so I would watch these people at the gas stations and they would just buy them. 
print them out and hand them back to the girl to have her scan them. They wouldn't even take the like three minutes it took to do the little game. They just hand them back and say, did I win? <laughs> Jesus. Um, oh, geez. Backwoods Butcher, um, they're going to have a salad bar. It looks like they're going to be setting up a salad bar in the lobby of the hotel uh, <laughs> that they're staying at. <laughs> Man, there's a... Uh... <laughs> I'm going to leave that as it is. Uh, anyway, what else? Oh, I, uh, I I was able to pick up my uh, package, this coffee episode, so I want to let uh, anybody going to SRF know. We'll have Silver Bullet uh, single-serve packs pre-ground for sale at SRF. They're going to be five bucks a piece. Killer deal on um, killer deal on that uh, on that single serve pot. So don't uh, don't be afraid if you are, are running low on coffee. You'll be able to stock up when you get to SRF. And uh, just the single serve pre grounds available for coffee. I don't like to uh, to push too much coffee at the the thing hosted by like a lady that roast coffee so anyway i have all those single packs and uh, they will be a uh, be for sale along with a bunch of other stuff at the lots project community vendor tent pip will be there with a boatload of ducks it sounds like the backwoods butcher toolman tim uh and uh, i think micah micah might actually throw some stuff in the booth if he didn't end up getting it his own but uh he is serving food so i'm guessing he might have uh, his own booth by that point but Anyway, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Mm, all right, let's get on. Uh, let's get moving on. <coughs> oh, man. It's not going to give up, guys. It's not going to give up for sure. Let's move on to that uh, topic of the day. Today, we're talking coffee. And uh, before that, I want to get to the sponsor of the day for all our coffee episodes. That's Food Forest Farms. At Food Forest Farms, the extraordinary is the norm. They, they fuel their missions with a diverse offerings from hand-roasted specialty coffees that'll bring joy to your mornings to stunning jewelry and metal art pieces that'll add flair to your style. And I've also seen uh, crocheted uh, sock puppets, too, on the... It's not sock puppets. I don't know if they're called sock puppets. But uh, craft, art, and other things on the Food Forest Farms website. Uh, that's not all, though. They provide unique camping experiences through Hip Camp and Airbnb stays perfect for adventure, adventure seekers in the Pacific Northwest. So whether you're a coffee enthusiast, a fan of unique crafts, or an adventurer at heart, Food Forest Farms has something special for you. Be ready to embark on their extraordinary journey head over to foodforestfarms.com to explore more don't forget to sign up for their newsletter and to stay in the loop about all their latest offerings and initiatives enjoy the adventure and guys if you are listening to this episode if you're listening to the audio i do have a one-time use lots 10 10 10 discount code when you code when you go to that to the site over there it is good for anything site-wide lots 10. Everybody else gets lots five when I throw it out there in text, but anybody that actually listens to the show, use lots 10 for a one-time 10% coupon. Try that coffee. It is uh, it is priced phenomenally, even without the discount. So man, with 10% off, order a couple pounds, give it a try and see what you think. Foodforestfarms.com. Thanks, Brian and Chicken Joe for sponsoring the show. I really appreciate it. All right. All right. Coffee health pros and cons. God, um, man, I hope by the end of this episode, I'm convinced that coffee is good for you because I'm not going to stop drinking it. I really am not. I, um, I miss you, Rightful. Yeah, actually, um, actually, listeners are up, man. MSU Rifle asks if anybody actually listens. <laughs> listen, downloads are actually up. I don't know if they actually listen. I might just have a bunch of people downloading it and sitting in their podcast players. That's uh, that's cool too. On my end, it doesn't matter if you actually listen to it. It's like the store when you buy something; they don't actually care if you open it as long as you give them money for it. <laughs> but anyway, by the end of the episode, I'm hoping that uh, I'm convinced that coffee is good for you or at least the coffee that I am drinking is good for me because uh, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. And I think we're uh, a society that will kind of gravitate towards what we like, whether it's whether it's healthy for us or not. 
I mean, just look around. Um, like cigarettes. There you go. There you go. Alcohol, things like that. If we enjoy it, if it gives us pleasure, it, it really outweighs the health the health uh, cons uh, of the product. So coffee, man, is one that's been in my life for a very, very long time, uh, way back to teenage years going into into college was uh, definitely a heavy coffee drinker, a shit coffee drinker at that point. Uh, and then progressing through bartending and then actually working at a, uh, at a specialty coffee shop for a while, taking all sorts of coffee classes always have enjoyed my coffee whether it be just to enjoy it or actually to wake up and and stay awake when when i used to be working long hours or get overnight shifts things like that and then i progressed into uh into a re really premium air roasted coffee from from brian at food forest farms and it it's phenomenal it is absolutely phenomenal i don't uh, i can't I can't say that I can't go a day. Uh, I prefer not to go a day without it. Uh, I, I've really cut back my consumption uh, to just a French press a day and and possibly two, depending on how stocked up I am on beans or uh, what I'm actually doing that day. So I really think that uh, a lot of this is going to come down to uh, moderation. Uh, obviously, anything is bad for you if you if you consume too much of it. If you consume gallons of coffee a day, probably not the best for you, even if this list says it is. Uh, just uh, just like anything, it uh, in excess, it's not going to be good. But I think uh, there are some 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 health concerns out there, and then you always have the government study that will tell you what you want. Well, I shouldn't say government study. You can always find a study that will back up what you want. Now, I recall as a kid growing up that I've several times, and not just coffee for other products too, but I've several times heard, it's good for you. And then a few years later, or less, it's bad for you. And then it's good for you. It's bad for you. It's good for you. And sometimes, like right in the same conversation, it seems... So I thought I would do this episode. I was kind of hunting the web, looking for um, looking for different takes on whether coffee was good or bad for you. I tried to pick some uh, some articles from way back, way back, you know, in the early 2000s. Maybe I don't even think I found one from the late 1900s, but uh, early 2000s right up to today, just to see a variety of opinions. Uh, it was interesting to see the studies they referenced. And it was like, oh, this study of 8,000 people in uh, central Uganda, um, we studied 8,000 pregnant women, and this is what we found. And it had nothing to do with being a woman or being pregnant. So I think this is more of a, of a fun list. There are some uh, some serious, uh, eh, serious, it is what it is. Like this is another, another thing of, um, hey, there's some of this in there, but how much is actually there depending on how much your consumption is. Is, uh, is it going to actually affect you? But there's some stuff that uh, Brian brought to my attention when I started uh, interacting with him with his coffee process and the process he uses for both his uh, regular and decaf. And then uh, I went down the rabbit hole of all the pros and cons. So I'm going to hit those things that Brian brought up first and uh, the benefits of air roasted, clean stream air roasted at that coffee. Um, the first concern that Brian looked at when he went to use doing air roasted, doing clean air stream roasted. And what I mean by that is we've talked about air roasting and drum roasting on previous coffee episodes. So drum roasting is like the dryer, um, like your electric or, or um, gas dryer heating up the drum and it's rolling around, it's hitting that. Um, you got exhaust streams in there. If they're using natural gas, they're they're um, they're combusting with natural gas. Uh, if they're uh, yeah, I think drum roasting as you're as you're blowing that air in there in the drum, it's it's going to have to be a gas stream, I believe. On the size of those, I could be wrong. Uh, I didn't look too much into that, but as far as uh, a clean air stream, Brian's method is electric heat. 
so it, it heats up an electric coil and the air blows over it so there's no combustion there's no exhaust um and that is the big concern about one of the big concerns about uh exhaust stream roasting so a natural gas uh pow a natural gas powered i guess powered would be the word um natural gas powered air roaster fueled uh is going to end up injecting or bathing i guess is a better word it's going to be bathing the coffee beans in hydrogen sulfide um hydrogen sulfide is uh is a a product of it's a uh, it's in natural gas and it's also amplified by the the combustion of natural gas and basically when you're roasting those beans you're heating that air through combustion and the hot air is the exhaust of the combustion process well through that there's hydrogen sulfide in in the the airstream in that exhaust stream hydrogen sulfide isn't the best for you it uh you can do your own research you can look up the side effects cause or the the effects that can cause is it enough to worry about probably probably is there a way to get rid of it likely uh from the from the research brian sent me from the articles brian sent me it appears that if they let the coffee sit for six to eight days uh it off gases the majority of the hydrogen sulfide some say all some say less than all the thing with coffee is it absorbs everything it absorbs flavors and smells and gases and substances uh, if you want to test this out, take your coffee beans and put them in a, put them in a container with an onion, a cut open onion, and then take the onion out and let the coffee sit there and then try making the coffee and see what it tastes like. See if you got any onion flavor that taste. So this is, uh, it's absorbing this hydrogen sulfide when you're in a, in a natural gas exhaust roasting mode in that, in that, uh, in that process of, of roasting the coffee uh the the clean air stream roasters the electric air stream roasters uh it, it's a cleaner heat it's a cleaner process um so that can be bad for you if it off gases is there any left i mean all of the testing and all of the allotment levels of this are um are set by the usda usda fda nah, one of the two and we we all know we all know that they would never they would never allow anything on the shelves they would never allow any products on the shelves that would be bad for us i i, I completely understand this so i could never imagine that they would ever have a product with a dangerous chemical in it no way no way so do your own research um hydrogen sulfide like i said it should it should off gas out of the beans within six to eight days so if your uh organic coffee roaster is throwing you a pound of coffee straight out of the roaster and it's a natural gas powered uh, uh fueled for the heat air roaster man i don't know that might open that shit up and let it sit for a few days but anyway Check out somebody that has an electric clean air stream roaster and you won't have to worry about the hydrogen sulfide. If you don't want to go that route, make sure you uh, look into the processes that your your coffee supplier, your coffee roaster uses and, uh, and if they let it sit off gas and uh, make it a little better for you. I am not going to go down the list of things that hydrogen sulfide can cause in the human body, but you are more than welcome to do that yourself because I want to move on to the next one. Anybody out there a fan of decaf that uh, if it gets, if it, you get a little jittery in the afternoon, but you still want that cup of coffee and uh, <coughs> um, coffee, you want some decaf coffee. Um, do you know how they get, do you know how they get the caffeine out of coffee? Normally, there's two major ways. One is a, a chemical process that they use a bunch of nasty chemicals and they soak the beans. Uh, one of those, uh, one of those, one of those chemicals that's allowable and it's also allowable to be left in the beans up to one ten millionth. Excuse me, I'm gonna look this up because I uh, I don't want to misquote this um, this number because it's allowable 
limit of excuse me excuse me um must have been in another article that i was reading the other night but it had it was like um uh 10 parts per million i believe something like that it was it was a not a very significant amount but definitely definitely enough uh the main chemical one of the chemicals they use to keep the taste in coffee to keep the good taste while they're chemically extracting the caffeine to make a decaf coffee is methylene chloride um Man, what is methylene chloride? Here, it's a you. If you want the chemical, uh, if you want the chemical uh, formula, it's CH two Cl two. It's a colorless liquid that can harm the eyes, skin, liver, and heart. Exposure can cause drowsiness, dizziness, numbness, and tingling in limbs, and nausea. It may cause cancer. Severe exposure can <laughs> cause loss of consciousness and death. Um, it is also one of the main ingredients in paint thinner and paint stripper. Um, yeah, this is what they use. This is what they use to make decaf coffee, guys. Uh, so they soak the beans in that. That sounds wonderful. Can't be anything wrong with that. I'm sure it all gets uh, it all gets dissipated out, and there's none of that carryover into a decaf Folgers or or the like. Uh, how much? I don't know. You drink coffee for 50 years. How many cups of coffee did you drink? Any idea? Can you guess how many cups of coffee does it take for something like that to accumulate in your body to uh, to cause long term effects? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, well, there are there is hope if you are a fan of decaf coffee. There is a method that can be used that is is safe and clean and uh, isn't going to leave any of that uh, methylene methylene chloride in your coffee beans. Uh, it's called Swiss water decaf. It is a it's a really cool clean process. I don't have time to go into that. Well, maybe uh, maybe that'll be an episode in the future. Will be all about decaffeinating and decaffeinated coffee and what it is and how it works and the methods used to brew it. I'll uh, drop that down on my notes here and be sure that'll be an upcoming coffee day episode. But anyway, Swiss water decaf is uh, it has none of the chemical, none of none of that uh, that methylene chloride to take the, the, take the caffeine out. So that's totally different process. Stay tuned, stay tuned uh, in the next couple of weeks for a decaf episode uh, on a coffee, coffee day on the Lots Project podcast. So those are the two things that Brian wanted me to touch on real quick is the decaf method with the methylene chloride, which is, is really not really good for you. And uh, the natural gas uh, fueled air roasters uh, dropping that hydrogen sulfide into the beans. And if it's not off gas, it's, it's very concentrated. If it is off gas, does it really all dissipate? I don't know. I don't know. I don't uh, partake in anything other than the clean Airstream roasted coffee at this point. So I did, uh, I did get another list of pros and cons here as I was talking, uh, as I said earlier today, uh, it's, it seems like my whole life it's been back and forth on, um, good for you, bad for you, good for you, bad for you. And, you know, the more you dig into it, the more you kind of pull strings in this world in general, uh, you realize that maybe, maybe people make things look the way they want to. Maybe we can make a study to say anything we want to. Uh, and as I started reading into this and finding lists of, uh, of, of pros and cons of coffee, to your to your own research, man. Like Google Google health pros and cons of coffee, and I read about seventeen articles on, on the list. And man, it's amazing when you look at it and and you see, like I said, uh, oh, we sampled three thousand people from a, a mountain peak in Peru. Uh, they all had one arm and uh, were blind in their left eye, and the majority of them that drank coffee every day could still see out of the right eye. It's like, excuse me? <laughs> but very, very, very specified. And it almost was like they were looking for the answer that they got. But we'll get to that list here in a second. Pip threw a, Pip threw a question out there. Uh, it says, so in theory, I could put coffee beans 
inside a container with, say, cinnamon sticks and get a flavored coffee. Um, I believe so. I don't necessarily know how how rich that flavor is going to be. Let me uh, let me talk to this coffee guy I know, and I can let you know. We can uh, we could set up an experiment and um, <laughs> set up an experiment and see, man. We could do some trial runs. I don't have any cinnamon sticks. I'm curious if um, I'm guessing if the beans. I'm guessing his answer is going to be, yeah, it all depends on if you grind the beans or not. I'm guessing if the beans are whole, it'll absorb uh, less of the flavor or take longer. If the beans are ground, I'm guessing it's going to absorb more of the flavor. But I don't know if it's necessarily going to be a pungent, like you can taste it on your tongue. When I used to drink Folgers and, uh, and make it every morning in the drip brew, I used to put nutmeg and cinnamon on the top of the grounds before I brewed. Made it slightly tolerable. So, MSU rifle, what a cynic! Yeah, I mean, is is just re, is just talking about the facts cynical? I mean, I didn't find that specific. Here, here we go. Here you go. Uh, I copied some of these uh, some of these little blurbs with the study they were referencing. But here, let's uh, let's let's hit the pros of coffee. Should we do the pros first and, and then and then bring you down at the end of the show and, and give the cons? Well, coffee is, is definitely good for you guys. I have uh, one, two, three, four, five things that ho- that coffee can help <laughs> coffee can help reduce. And I will give you I will give you the facts. Uh, did you know that coffee can uh, help reduce diabetes? A study of 14,000 people in Finland. That's the world's greatest per capita consumer of coffee. Interesting. Is that because it's cold there that they drink more coffee? I don't know if I would have picked Finland off a list of 40 countries that uh, that were the top consumer of coffee. But they found that women who drank three to four cups a day cut their risk for developing diabetes by 29%. For men, it was 27%. Researchers aren't sure why, but suspect that it's the antioxidants in the coffee that help deliver insulin to the body's tissues. So here we go, guys. 14,000 people we studied. I don't know what the population of Finland is. I'm guessing it's quite a bit more than 14,000. Um, but, you know, we determined that uh, we're going to reduce diabetes by 30% in women and 27% in men as long as we're drinking uh, three to four cups a day. I think that the U.S. should start mandating three to four cups of coffee a day every morning, and uh, we would we would solve some of our problems. Uh, let's move on uh, to the big C, cancer. Uh, did you know that coffee can help prevent cancer? Because in Japan, a study of 90,000, hey, at least we're getting up almost to 100,000 people, 90,000 people revealed that those who drank coffee every day for 10 years were half as likely to get liver cancer. You get a 50% reduction in uh, liver cancer as long as you drink coffee for 10 years, guys. Meanwhile, German scientists have identified an active compound in coffee called methylpyridinium, I believe, that boosts enzymes thought to prevent colon cancer. So, guys, start drinking your coffee every day. You're going to have to do it for another 10 years, or if you've got a 10-year head start, you're already in the clear but you're gonna reduce your uh, you're gonna reduce that by half your chance of getting liver cancer or colon cancer. Here's the healthy colon. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, that's so we got uh, two things we're preventing now: Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease was on the list. Researchers in Hawaii monitored monitored the health of more than 8,000 Japanese American men for 30 years. They monitored 8,000 Japanese American men in Hawaii. All right, well, we picked our sample and they discovered, you would never guess, they discovered those who drank a cup of coffee a day had less than half the incidence of Parkinson's disease. I'm curious out of 8,000 people, Uh, specifically 8,000 Japanese-American men living in Hawaii, what the average amount of Parkinson's disease cases is. But a possible 
clue to why this happens is caffeine promotes the release of dopamine, a substance involved. In causation, you've, you've heard of that. Uh, you've heard of correlation and causation. Um, <laughs> does it cause it? Is it coincidence? I will definitely tell you that coffee releases dopamine. You can tell it when you drink it in the morning. Dopamine, uh, it gets you that hit. It gets you that pleasure. That pleasure center lights up. But like the, the article said, it is also involved in movement and uh, muscle control and things like that. So uh, it, it makes sense that it would be depleted in Parkinson's sufferers. But, I mean, <laughs> getting one for the road, MSU rifle. All right, man. Um, so we're, gonna, we're going to reduce diabetes, cancer, and Parkinson's disease by just having our morning cup. Other than that, this other uh, potentially uh, health benefit I found on this one list was gallstones. Did you know that coffee can prevent gallstones, help prevent gallstones? A U.S. study of 46,000 men who drank two to three cups of coffee a day over a 10-year period revealed they had a 40% lower risk of developing gallstones. Researchers believe it is because caffeine stimulates the gallbladder, flushing out substances that can turn into gallstones. Did you drink coffee before you got your gallstones? Men also don't get them as much as women. Huh. Corey just says that men don't get them as much as women. So maybe if uh, if you're a guy, you got less of a chance. And if you drink two to three cups of coffee a day, you're gonna be golden. You're gonna be golden. So those are some of the some some of the coffee. Um... <laughs> oh. MSU rifle misspoke and said uh, one the one the road. I assume that he was having one for the road. He said no. He meant he's on the road. He doesn't drink this stuff. <laughs> but dude, you uh, you would you would be reducing your risk for gallstones, gallstones, Parkinson's disease, cancer, and diabetes. All you have to do is have two to three cups uh, a day. Oh. Guys, we have a comment over on Twitch. Hello, sorry for bothering you. I want to offer you promotions for your channels, viewers, followers, views, chatbots, etc. Editor, the quality is guaranteed to be the best. Flexible and convenient order management panel. Everything is in your hands. Turn it on, off, and customize. Go to Streamrise. Streamriser you something i don't know they didn't put a fucking link in there or anything like that so how am i supposed to even participate in their scam anyway let's get on to the cons the cons of coffee these are potentially harmful effects that uh that doctors have found i'm gonna hit those i got uh three of those and then i got some other odds and ends on the list here let's see well you get amped up you have your coffee you're all jittery what do you think could happen there is a risk, uh, increased risk of heart attack and stroke. Here's the here's from the article. I'm gonna quote. There's there's hot debate on whether drinking coffee is a cardiac risk. A Greek study of more than three thousand people, guys, they they studied three thousand people. That is that is a, a, a sufficient sample size, I believe, uh, and found coffee drinkers had higher levels of inflammatory substances, which have been associated with increased rates of stroke and heart attack in their blood than non-drinkers. But Harvard researchers looking at the health of coffee drinkers over 20 years could not pinpoint any extra coronary problems. Nevertheless, we're going to tell you what we think. A study of 2,028 Costa Ricans, we even dropped the sample size there a little bit, found those with a gene variant that processes caffeine four times slower than average and who also drank two to three cups of coffee a day up their heart attack risk by 36%. As this group metabolizes caffeine slower, it remains in the body for longer, possibly pushing up blood pressure. So MSU Rifle said that I was being a cynic earlier when I was like, they found a sample size of people of Peruvian women with one eye uh, living on a mountaintop. 
thought I was cynical. Did you hear this? A study of 2,028, 2,028 people, not 2028, we're not there yet, Costa Ricans found those, those with a gene variant that processes caffeine four times slower than average. So we're only taking 2,000 people and then we're going to cut it. How many of these people actually have this gene variant? Um, and of course, if they process caffeine slower and drink the same amount, their blood pressure is going to go up. Guys, you know what? Uh, I got to get to the end of the list. <laughs> Next one on the list, rheumatoid, arth rheumatoid arthritis. We're back to Finland now. Finish, the Finnish study of 19,000 people revealed those who drank four or more cups of coffee a day were twice as likely to develop rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis. Researchers believe some as yet unidentified ingredients particularly in unfiltered coffee, could trigger the disease. Now, you know this is a solid study when you got 19,000 people and we're finding, a, we're finding a, a cause and effect here. We don't know what the cause is. We have no idea what's causing it. But this is what it's doing. And we're thinking it's because of this. So we're going to publish this and we're going to put it out and we're going to get a sound bite and we're going to put it in the news. Coffee is bad for you today. This is how this all goes down. This is how it all happens. And the last one on the, the, the con list, I have osteoporosis. Osteoporosis, a California study of, wait, wait for it. How many people are in California? Anybody know? Is there anybody in the live that knows the population of California? Because a Californian study of 980 980. 980 postmenopausal women found that those who drank two cups of coffee a day suffered a greater loss in bone density than those who didn't. How come? Because caffeine acts as a diuretic, increasing the amount of cal calcium excreted in urine. <sighs> yep. 980 people they studied. So I'm curious how many of the 980 people actually drink coffee. I'm curious how many of the 980 that didn't drink coffee also had osteoporosis for other reasons. I'm wondering how many people of the 980 postmenopausal women that had osteoporosis had it for a different reason than the coffee that they drank. I don't know, guys. It, it, really, it really is definitely easy to put out any information you want. <laughs> you can find a study of anything you want you can manipulate numbers you can definitely manipulate numbers to look however you want and i'm looking over at corey she knows exactly what i'm talking about but uh yeah you can do whatever you want especially when you're taking sample sizes this small i'm looking at these studies 900 and and, and 80 specific people it was almost like they wanted to find the answers that they had before they went into the study if I was looking to find somebody that got had osteoporosis, I would probably target postmenopausal women. Find enough of them, you're going to find some that drink coffee that also have osteoporosis. Interesting. I also had some of these other ones on the list. Um, let me. I got all messed up on my notes here when I was searching for that methyl uh, that the methyl chlor methylene chloride uh, number. Uh, diabetes is on the list. Let me go through um, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. They also, in this article, they added on Alzheimer's along with Parkinson's for the benefits of of having coffee uh, for the same reasons, for that dopamine and uh, and that dopamine hit every day and keeping that dopamine, dopamine levels higher in the body. Uh, cancer. Um, Oh, did you guys know that ca coffee can negatively impact your sleep time, efficiency, and satisfaction levels? This article here says uh, says that uh, that if you drink too much coffee close enough to bed, caffeine's going to keep you up, and your sleep patterns are going to be messed up. Now, as it is a out again. Hey, 
that the, the Starlink's been borderline uh, ready to cut out all the whole show, and I'm pretty sure it's going to sound like crap. So I apologize, guys, if it's it's if it's all robot voice and everything. Unless it clicks out, I can't really tell um, on the audio what it sounds like. And uh, to get it produced and out in time, I don't have time to listen back to the whole thing before I publish it. So if you're listening and this is all crappy, I uh, it is it is what it is, guys. It is part of what it is being in the trailer, being mobile with uh, with satellite internet. So I apologize. I apologize if it was pretty crappy all day. Uh, but anyway, the sleep. I, I will I will concede to this for sure. I don't think it's necessarily a health risk. It's not. I think everything else that we were talking about was cumulative. We were talking uh, 10 years of drinking coffee, 20 years of drinking coffee. And that one study was they followed those Japanese American men for 30 years. Um, the sleep thing, man, it, it it's the real deal. Uh, I, I can notice it. So I could tell you that I noticed it more um, long ago when I was consuming more than just coffee. I was consuming coffee and energy drinks, things like that. That was it was very highly caffeinated. Let's just put it that way. Uh, when I when I broke that habit, man, it was like I had the flu for two days. I think I was on the couch, just pat, like headache, uh, migraine, flu symptoms. I got through it and I really moderated back. I cut out all the energy drinks out of my life. This was, oh man, probably eight years ago. I don't think I've had one for quite some time, uh, but I, I held on to the coffee, but I really dialed that back also. Uh, what I found is once I got to a point where I was having just one French press in the morning, maybe two, I sleep much better. I am able to fall asleep. Um, easier i sleep harder and that coffee in the morning actually it, it wakes me up a little bit more but i've noticed recently when i've been going out to tim's in the morning um it's a different timing when i have a second french press so i have my first one with you guys in the morning doing the show uh, i usually finish it up right at the end of the show and then we take the dogs for a walk if I'm having a set, second French press because I'm staying doing office work all day, I'll have it right away. It'll be done by nine o'clock. I'll be I'll be done drinking it usually nine nine thirty at the latest. When I've been going out to Tim's, I've been making a second French press and putting one in a travel mug and uh, drinking one on the way out. I've been beating Tim out to the property lately and going for a walk with coffee or just going and sitting on a log and and being in nature for a little bit. And I've noticed that when I go an extra hour, even an extra hour, and finish that coffee at 10.30-ish, 1030, uh, 1030 uh, even pushing 11, like I set it down the one day and it stayed warm, but I, uh, I finished it off as just, uh, I was thirsty, needed something to drink, and uh, I finished off a half a cup of coffee, it was at like 11.30, I couldn't fall asleep that night. And was it that? I don't know. I didn't really have anything else that I, I, I noticed that would have been keeping me up. I didn't have anything on my mind necessarily, uh, but it felt like it was really hard to fall asleep. So even that extra two hours later in the day really affects me. But I think it's because I, I cleansed of all the caffeine intake, got buried to minimum. And I think it was actually before we were going to do a... a, a some sort of diet, one of the diets we've done in the past where it was just clean. It was just water. You weren't, you didn't drink coffee. So if I, uh, I, I weaned myself off very abruptly, but it, it seems to affect me more. And like I said, it's, it's, it's nicer in the morning that it, it feels better in the morning. That one cup, that one French press, like does it, uh, that extra one is nice when I have to focus. That was one of the things on a list I read that, um, I, it didn't have very many scientific uh, studies or anything behind it, but it was talking about mental clarity and focus that uh, coffee can really, caffeine in general can really, um, really help you focus. It can help you um, with your mental clarity, your thought process. Others, it puts you into a scatterbrain st uh, state. It's, it's all about the amount you have in you and the effects on it. It produces dopamine. It makes it pleasurable uh, to do what you're doing. So there is that. 
uh, the sleep and the sleep patterns can be regulated on your own. I don't think that is a cumulative thing over time. Um, it's efficiency and satisfaction levels. So like I was just mentioning, there was another article that said uh, productivity, mental clarity, uh, focus, all improve with coffee. This article here is saying efficiency is deterrent. It's deterred by coffee. Um, you know what? They both did a study. They both did a small sample size study and they can come out with whatever they want. So efficiency could be, you could become more scatterbrained. You could become more jittery. You could be become more distracted. Uh, it all depends on how caffeine affects you. Satisfaction levels. Of course, satisfaction levels can be affected. It produces dopamine. That's the whole thing. If you overproduce dopamine in your head, when something that should be pleasurable to you or satisfying to you comes about comes around, it's like meh. It's just like doing cocaine. <laughs> it's just like doing other drugs that that stimulate dopamine. Um, it's 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 flooding your brain artificially with the the pleasure uh, the pleasure drug in your mind. So when something that should um, stimulate that doesn't stimulate as much as the coffee, it's just not quite as good. It's not quite as good. There are ways to reset that in your mind. There's ways to, uh, to kind of hit the reset button. There's kind of, there's ways like I did to purge yourself of, of using caffeine, which can eventually reset your dopamine levels in my experience. Um, <coughs> mess around with it. It, it. it is all a person to person. It is all a person to person um, effect, I think. So anyway, that's kind of where I got for today. And I just wanted to throw out there, guys, it's um, is coffee good for you? Is it bad for you? Are there pros? Are there cons? Is it going to help you prevent disease? Is it going to give you disease? Maybe. Maybe. Is it going to, if you enjoy your cup of coffee this morning, is this one going to kill you? Probably not. Could things over 20, 30 years accumulate in your body from, from doing that? Yeah. Could things over 20, 30 years of, uh, of walking to work in the city with the exhaust coming out of the cars do more damage? Probably. I don't know. I could probably find you a study that says yes and no. So, you know, take it for what it is. I think I did this episode kind of more um, more tongue in cheek. There are the serious issues that Brian uh, Brian posed uh, with the the decaffeination process and the the hydrogen sulfide. I believe it's hydrogen sulfide. Excuse me, I didn't uh, I didn't leave my notes up, but um, the yeah hydrogen sulfide. Excuse me in the in the um, natural gas exhaust. So those are 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 pretty legitimate concerns. But again. Those are cumulative. All of these things are cumulative. Having that cup of coffee uh, is not going to put you over the edge. I don't think. This isn't health advice. Please don't take this as uh, the advice of a doctor. This is the advice of a guy reading internet research trying to make a farce of all the studies because I, I over the years, like I said, have, have seen it good for you, bad for you, and indifferent. So Guys, enjoy good coffee. Enjoy it. If you're going to drink it and it might kill you, you might as well enjoy it. You might as well drink something that tastes good. Uh, and if you haven't tried good coffee, like premium hand-roasted coffee, uh, you don't know what you're missing. You don't know what you you don't know what's out there until you try it. So maybe give it a try. Maybe the price increase is, good, is enough. Maybe you realize that uh, maybe you should only be drinking that one French press a day and it's now affordable because you're not guzzling seven pots of uh, acid ash water that comes in the red tub or the blue tub or whatever tub it comes in. Uh, check it out. Think about it. Uh, definitely check out our sponsor today, uh, Food Forest Farms. It's it's fantastic coffee, guys. And, and Brian... Brian there, the customer service level is through the roof. He will definitely match your taste. Get a hold of him. Send him a message. Uh, order something on the site and uh, and put your description of what you are looking for in the notes, uh, what you currently drink, what you're looking to drink, uh, what you enjoy about coffee. He will be able to send you what you need. Don't worry about what you order. 
just order it and let him know what you want. The customer service is phenomenal and he will get you what you need for sure. Foodforestfarms.com. Thanks again, Brian and Chicken Joe for sponsoring the show. Tomorrow, what do we got coming up tomorrow? We got a random topic Friday. I got odds and ends. I got a couple of listener questions come in uh, and listener topics, but just one off topics that weren't enough for a whole show that I wanted to make sure I, I hit on. So that'll be tomorrow. We'll also be doing the first week of 15K giveaway. If we can get 15 people in, entered into that live drawing uh, during the show, by the end of the show, we will give away 15,000 Satoshis at the end. Otherwise, we're going to bump that over to next week and keep rolling that up until we get 15 entrants and then have a big old giveaway, I'm guessing. So let's uh, let's try to get that to happen. Invite your friends, invite, uh, make extra accounts. I don't know, whatever you got to do. But uh, join me tomorrow for Random Topic Friday and the 15K giveaway. If you'd like to participate in those live comments, you can always join me and the live recording Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Central on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter. If you'd enjoyed the show, please consider sharing it with others. You can find a post about the episode along with links to all my social media services I offer, recommended products, and companies I'm affiliated with at thelotsproject.com. You can also find me in person this weekend at Self-Reliance Festival. Grab those virtual tickets. Uh, link is on my website. Be sure to listen to one of on one of your favorite podcast 2.0 value for value podcast players like Podverse or Fountain.fm. Make it a great day, guys. We're going to have a big old work day out at Toolman Temps. Should be really productive. We got a GSD crew coming for sure. I can tell by the people that showed up yesterday and uh, the list of people showing up today. So we should be knocking it out of the park here pretty soon. Make it a great day, guys. We'll catch up with you on Friday.